Hello everyone, my name is Brett Denman and welcome to another episode of Our High Calling. I pray this last week has been a blessed one for you as it has been for me and my family. You know, I work with a lot of younger people. Uh, I'm an old head, uh, but I work with a lot of young people and they always have these uh, slang words much like I did when I was their age. And um, so sometimes during conversation they'll say things. And I'll be like, uh, can I get a translation on what you just said? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. So they'll tell me uh, what it means. And sometimes um, I'll just roll my eyes. But other times it's like, okay, I, I get that. That's, that's pretty cool. So one thing um, that I hear a lot, not just uh, from young people, but you'll hear it um, if you watch sports or anything like that. Um, you'll hear um, the slang or the term, let them cook. So, as defined by the Urban Dictionary, let him cook means uh, to let him do his thing or uh, to give someone space to hone their craft. And I like that. You know, let him cook, let him, let him, let him do his thing. And um, that got me thinking in spiritual terms because I like to turn things into an object lesson. So, what I want to talk about today is I want to let God cook. Let's let God do his thing. And what I mean by that is I want to talk about the word of God, the Bible. You know, God has um, not only inspired the writing of the Bible, but he has preserved it over time for us to use today. And we as followers of Christ, followers, um, worshipers of God, we need... Um, to just be fed what God is, has already cooked. God has already perfected it, uh, his word. He, he's, he's honed it. And it's for us not to go in the kitchen and do some cooking ourselves, but to just um, be fed, right? In John 6.35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. And Jesus talks about how the word is, is food. The word is, is the bread. And he encourages us to, to feed the people and to be fed ourselves. Like if you go to John 21, um, Simon Peter, uh, it's, a, it's the part where Simon Peter had rejected Jesus. And Simon Peter was very sad. But then obviously Jesus was resurrected uh, and he came back and he basically uh, redeemed Simon Peter. So if we go to John 21, 15 to 17, it says, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second, uh, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. And then a third time he said unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. So we as Christians, if we are... Uh, to feed the sheep. We are not to use um, our own uh, form of gospel. We are to use the gospel as, as it is written in, in the Bible. And, and when I'm talking about the Bible, I usually talk about the King James Version. Even though when I often talked about my testimony, I was such a noob uh, before I came to the faith that I needed a modern version just to understand. But once I grew up once I no longer needed the milk, and I'm going to tell you that a lot of these trans modern translations, it's just milk. But once uh, I, I wanted the meat, I moved to the King James Version. So in Psalm 12, verse 7, God promised to preserve his word from this generation forever. Um, you know, preservation served to prevent accidental corruption of the text during transmission. And also, this divine um, preservation counters the deliberate, concentrated war on the Bible by Satan and his agent, 
agents. And make no mistake that Satan wants to corrupt the Bible. Because if he corrupts the Bible, he can corrupt the Christian. And if he can corrupt the Christian, then he can maybe um, stop you from entering heaven or worshiping God the right way. You know, the the conspiracy to pervert the word of God is worldwide. And it, it goes way back to ancient times. The word has been under attack since the serpent deceived Eve. The enemy of mankind, knowing that the scriptures lead to salvation, causes man to doubt the Bible, to reject the Bible, and to even alter the Bible. That's the three-prong approach from Satan that, he's, that we can witness today. You know, the corruptions are numerous um, as the heresies that spawn them, right? God has strengthened and purified his word that it may stand against all these assaults. You know, Martin Luther once said, the Bible is like a lion. It does not need to be defended. Just let it loose and it will defend itself. God has preserved his word and it can defend itself despite the opposition of the devil and, and man, right? God's word remains pure, inspired, and inerrant. And how do we know that heretics have attempted to change the word of God? God has given us warning about this in the gospel, right? The Lord takes his word very seriously. He has preserved it for us. He has commanded us not to change it in any way. And he has given us warning about those who alter it. Um, so let's let's take a look at some Bible verses concerning that, right? God has commanded us, do not change his word. He, right? he is the author, and he basically holds the eternal copyright. He allows us um, to copy it and to spread it to the entire world. However, he strictly forbids the addition or removal of anything from his word. Right, if we go to Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. If you add to his words, you make yourself a liar. Proverbs 30, verse 6, Add thou not unto God's words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Prohibiting, uh, prohibition, on altering God's word is not limited to the, to the Old Testament. Um, the closing verses of the New Testament contain also a very strong warning, very similar to what we just read in Deuteronomy 4, verse 2. So if we go to the book of Revelation, Revelation 22, 18 and 19, it says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And verse 19 says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So does God have an opinion concerning his, his word? Yeah, it's inspired, and it's perfect, and he forbids us from polluting it, by either adding or taking away. To keep us from accepting a counterfeit Bible, God has warned us of those who change it. And who changes the Bible? Well, I'm going to tell you. Satan changes the Bible. Sinners change the Bible. Heretics change the Bible. False prophets, false teachers, uh, false apostles. Uh, along with their followers, all you, you have to go all the way back to the book of Genesis to see where this um, war on God, God's word began. So if you go back to Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 16, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And then enter Satan. Right? He, he's, he came in the form of a serpent. What does he say in Genesis 
Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So here he's calling into doubt what God said. And he adds um, to what God said, or he changes what God said because he says, ye shall not surely die, right? Genesis 3, 4. So he's calling God a liar. And we know that God has no reason to lie to us. He's our advocate. He created us. He only wants the best for us. That's why when he created this world, he put us in the perfect situation to thrive. Right? He set us up for success. So God has no reason to lie to us. So if anybody ever calls God a liar, they, they have a bad spirit about them. So here we have Satan called God a liar, right? You're not going to die. And then he, Satan added to his lie by saying, For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the God, Satan cannot touch the word of God without corrupting something. And not only does it behoove him to corrupt it, because Satan knows he's lost. There's no going back for him. Lucifer, the covering cherub in heaven, was cast out. He's lost. There's no going. It's not that he can't change. His, his heart is hard. And he's trying to take as many people down as he can. Because he, I'm not going to get into it today, but his whole purpose and goal was to gain a following, to be godlike. And if you reject God, the Father, reject his Son, and reject what the Holy Spirit does, then you are against God. Jesus says you're either with me or against me. Then you are against God and you are with Satan. That's what Satan's goal is. Remember, it's this is a black and white issue. This is a this salvation is not um, you know, you get a, a one chance and then you get another chance. It's pass fail. So here we have Satan who's lost. He's trying to corrupt the word of God, which leads men and women to salvation. If you read in Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they shall dash their foot against the stone. Now, remember when Satan went into the wilderness. Um, Satan perverted that. Because remember, Satan was talking to Jesus when he was out in the wilderness in the, in the book of Luke. Well, actually, in many versions, but uh, any uh, books. But in Luke 4, verse 10 11, Satan says, For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash their foot against a stone. So here Satan removes in all thy ways and adds, at any time. So you may think that this is just a little change, but these corruptions give the reader the impression that we can do things that we know are foolish and the Lord will always get us out of it. But Jesus was not deceived. What did he say in, in Luke 4.12? He says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It, it is the devil that takes the word of God um, out of the heart, lest the sinner be saved. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word. Right? Luke eight twelve. Satan has always sought to do away with the word of God. And of course, since he can't do away with it, he's going to pervert it. Um, and it's not just Satan. He has human agents that are fast at work to change and discredit God's word. You know, the, the Bible clearly exposes the human element in, in the perversion of the word. From the false prophet um, of the Old Testament to the false teachers that we have today. And we have to admonish um, ourselves. We have to, to understand that we need to study the word of God. And we need to study it unadulterated. And we have to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for us. And if that plan or purpose deviates from the life of Christ, because we are to reflect the character of Christ when he came to this planet. So we have to be careful of a message being given to us 
that lessens the impact that Christ had on our lives. Mainly humility, poverty, empathy, compassion, love. If all these things are removed and instead the focus is on self, then you know that there's a corruption there. Let's go to another Bible verse. Because we want the true gospel. And we, we want to have the unadulterated word of God. Let's go to Romans one twenty one. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And then we go to verse 25 who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. These people have rejected God and have changed the truth of God into a lie. They are hardened sinners who love their sin, who want nothing to do with God and his salvation and his standards. These people go beyond rejecting the word of God in, in their own lives. They want to change the word and thus justifying their sins. And being convicted by scripture, but being hardened against God, what they're trying to do is they're trying to, to change these passages so that what they're doing is justified. And, and this is done um, over and over again. Because typically, what does the Bible say? The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes uh, to the Father except through him. Who doesn't like that? Well, the Jews and the Muslims don't like that. So they want to get that changed. And then, of course, Jesus has standards to live by. And that includes how we treat others, how we treat our bodies what we do with our bodies, the words that come out of our mouth, who's that going to offend? Well, if you're a sodomite, it, it might offend you because God says that's a sin. So here we have these, these groups that want to retranslate the Bible to make what they're doing acceptable. But these these alterations are perversions and we have to reject them. But there's some people that want it to be true and they, they reject. For example, you have this prosperity gospel that says God is going to bless you. And if you're not, uh, if you're not under the favor, you know, if you're not favored by God, then you're going to have trouble. Listen, that's the, that's the, the doctrine that Job's friends brought to him. Well, you must be a sinner. You must have done something, right? The guy who, who was born blind brought to the temple. Well, your parents must have sinned for you to be. That's a perversion. If we look at the life of Christ, he lived in poverty. He told the rich young ruler, sell everything you have. Give to the poor. Follow me. Jesus is not preaching a prosperity gospel. Our treasure is to be in heaven, not here on earth. What, what are we to do here on earth? We are to be sanctified, and we are to take on the holiness and righteousness of Christ. We are covered by his grace. We deserve what happened to him. But because of the sacrifice of Christ, we are, we are forgiven. We are redeemed. But these people want to be redeemed in their sin instead of overcoming sin. You know, we have, um, well, I want to read, let's, let's read another um, Bible verse about perverting the gospel. Let's go to 2 Peter 2. So 2 Peter 2, verse 1 to 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among, among you who privately say uh, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that uh, bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. 
and therefore and, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not false teachers will come bearing feigned words fake words false words words that appear to be words of god but are not their words are but a perversion of the inspired writings and what is their motive it's covetousness right it's it's the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes the pride of life they lust after wealth they lust after fame they lust after followers and they are willing to make a mockery of the word of god to satisfy their lusts peter continues his warning against those who use great uh, swelling words of vanity and that means carefully crafted lies and the lusts of the flesh which i spoke about in second peter 218 they use that to draw followers we are repeatedly warned because many will get caught up in the deception and that deception could knock us off the narrow way and put us on the broad road of destruction you know a heretic which is is likes to be passed around by the catholic church to anybody that doesn't believe the things of the catholic church um, which i don't even want to get into how unbiblical the catholic church is today but they'll call you a heretic but a heretic is someone who uh, produces their own version or perversion of god's word in agreement with their heresy and this is to lead people astray um, acts twenty thirty says also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves so people are perverting the word of god to draw people to them and look i've realized this as i've matured as a christian if you want to do something let's say you want to drink alcohol you can find a church that's in a bar i've seen it it was there was one in seattle they had a bar church where they'd go and they'd you know drink beer and, and listen to the word of god or if you want to be a homosexual and still worship god there's a church for you you know i haven't researched it but maybe if you want to be a liar or a thief or an adulterer there's a church out there that allow you to do that as well and you know what they probably have a bible version that justifies what they're doing every every church that goes their own way they'll have their own version right you have a jesuit version of the bible you have a jehovah witness version of the bible you have a mormon version of the bible they all have their own version and if they're going to say well let's study this out and they pull out their own version you have to say well let's uh let's use the king james version and see what happens well don't tell that to a catholic because they'll say that the king james version is a heretical bible which why wouldn't they because a lot of the stuff that happens in the catholic church is not found in the bible my bible anyway but i'm not going to get into that right now so there's many warnings god gives a severe warning to those who tamper with his word and the one that i read in revelation 22 says that your name is going to be removed from the book of life or that you're going to be punished with plagues you know that's pretty serious you know uh jeremiah um 23 there was um a judgment on people that were falsely proclaim proclaiming the word of god i'm going to read that right now uh, Jeremiah 23, I'm going to start in verse 31. Behold, I am against the prophets, said the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. In verse 39, 
Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you. I will forsake you, the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. Well, wow, that's pretty that's pretty serious. If you are guilty of willfully changing God's word, God will punish you. Attempts to change, rewrite, outlaw, and destroy his word will not be uh, forgotten. God has kept his word pure, and your modifications are just a, a, a counterfeit. And the people who do that need to repent. You know, God's word is under attack. I see it all over the place. I see people misquoting the Bible. Listen, I, I have many secular people in my family. And they like to post things, uh, spiritual things on their Facebook page saying, Oh, you know, if you're a true Christian, you're, you're going you're gonna to love everyone. But that's not really what they're saying. What they're saying is that we don't like the fact that the Bible calls out certain groups of people and the things that they do and calls it a sin. They want us just to love everybody. And they're like, Jesus loved everybody. That's right. But Jesus also said, go and sin no more. And if the Bible calls it a sin, it's a sin. And time doesn't change anything because God is eternal and his word is eternal and the truths found within the Bible are eternal. What Jesus did for us on the cross is eternal. That's the only way for salvation is by making uh, Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. To change any of that is, is to you now go in the kitchen and start cooking yourself. But we are not called to cook. God is the cook. God has prepared for us a delicious meal. We are only to eat it and to share it with others. So, God's word is under attack. He has preserved his word to counter that attack. Unfortunately, there's, there's counterfeit Gospels and counterfeit Bibles out there. But God has warned us against all of them. You know, these forgeries have, have been produced by sinners and heretics, like I said, wanting to justify um, the error of their ways. And God will deal with them. But it's for us, we have to warn people. We have to just to be a light in that darkness. And if people reject you and they want to hold on to their faults, that's not our job. We can pray for them that the Holy Spirit will bring light uh, you know, to their mind, that they will be um, realize that that's not God's plan. It's not God's plan that we all have mansions and, and, and material things. God is preparing a place for us. Remember, Jesus says this, this, his kingdom is not of this world. We are to be sojourners. We are just getting through this life. And to get through this life, we need the help of God. What we're called to do is, is to feed on the word of God, the unadulterated word of God. And where it leads us, we are to follow. We are not to pick and choose what we like. It's all important. We are to change as the Bible instructs us. If we had one belief system, but the Bible tells us to go a different way, we go that way. If your ultimate goal is heaven, then you will follow the way that the Bible has taught you. Don't get caught up in um, what the society of today is pushing. Because it will continue to change. It will continue to go down. We see it. It's, I could tell you right now, it started in 2015 where people are saying, well, you know, let the homosexuals marry. But look how, where it's gone in eight years. Now we have, let's put 
<laughs> drag queens in the library at school and pornography in school. The perversion is just is off the charts. And I tell you right now, if God doesn't come soon, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah because we are we are getting there. But brothers and sisters, take the take the word of God, feast on it. It is written, right? You cannot live by bread alone, but by every word. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for preserving your word to us today in 2023 and that we can read it and the Holy Spirit will lead and direct our thoughts that we will gain an understanding and that your son died on the cross for us to give us salvation, which we do not deserve. Please help us as we study the Bible every day that we may not be deceived, but we may be led down the straight and narrow way. We thank you for your love and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful uh, upcoming week, and we'll see you back here next time. God bless.